Okay, so this picture shows some optical fibers, and they're useful because you can transmit light through them by using total internal reflection. Okay, so here's a picture of the optical fiber. So the inside part is called the core, and the outside part is called the cladding, and light travels within the core. Now, because the cladding has a low refractive index, if the light hits at an angle greater than the critical angle, then it does total internal reflection, and this way the light can travel through the core of the optical fiber. And even if you bend it, it can still travel along by total internal reflection. The cladding has also protects the core from being scratched or damaged. And also the cladding prevents crossover of signals. So if two optical fibers are touching, if, if they didn't have a cladding, uh, signals from one would transfer to the other. So the, um, the cladding prevents this from happening. So one of the uses of optical fibers is in endoscopes. Endoscopes can be used to see inside people. You send some light down one optical fiber and that will reflect off organs inside, for example, the stomach in this case. And then once it reflects off, that, it can go up through a different optical fiber and then it can be seen on the monitor down here. Okay, another use is in high speed internet. So you can send information through the optical fiber by sending pulses of light. Okay, so when you send these pulses through the optical fiber, it will bend towards normal and then do total internal reflection and then bend away from normal. And ideally what you want to see is the same pulse that you send down appearing at the other end. However, in reality, the intensity of the pulse that appear will be lower. That's because there will be some absorption as it travels along the core. And this may be due to some imperfection in the core itself. And then also the, we can see the pulses are broadened. Okay, this is going to be an issue because if these pulses start to overlap with each other, what was initially two uh, pulses will appear as one long uh, signal. Okay, one of the causes of pulse broadening is called material or chromatic dispersion. This occurs when you use white light as your pulses. When they get sent down through the optical fiber, it appears at the other end like this. And as you can see, this is because the red on the right hand side there is the faster wavelength. The, the longer wavelengths are faster and the shorter wavelengths are slower. So this causes the pulse to be broadened. Okay, so this is called material chromatic dispersion. It's because the short wavelength is traveling more slowly, so it takes longer to arrive for, uh, to travel the same distance. And one way we can reduce this is by just using monochromatic light, so a single wavelength light. Okay, a second reason for pulse broadening is called modal dispersion. And this occurs when you send down monochromatic light through the optical fiber. One of the paths it can take is direct path from one end to another end. And as you can imagine, this will take the shortest amount of time and will arrive there at the other end first. However, if you send down a light which is slightly at an angle, it will reflect and therefore will take a bit longer to travel the same length of optical fiber because of the fact that it does actually travel a longer distance because of all that multiple reflections. And this here is even worse. As you can see, there's multiple reflections that will arrive last. Okay, so that's why the other end, we got a pulse broadening with the direct path arriving uh, rays that travel the direct path arriving first and the rays that travel had multiple reflections arriving last. So this is called modal dispersion and it's caused by the fact that the direct path uh, travels a shorter distance so it takes less time to tra uh, traverse the whole optical fiber. And one solution to this is to use something called single mode fibers which limit the number of possible ways in which the light can travel down the optical fiber. Okay, the second way to reduce mole dispersion is to use cladding with slightly higher refractive index. Now the refractive index of the cladding is still lower than that of the core, because if it wasn't, total internal reflection wouldn't occur. However, if the difference in the refractive index is, is smaller, then the critical angle actually gets larger. And the, if you look at the parts that have multiple reflection, the angle at which they're incident, this angle here, is actually pretty small. And if the angle is smaller than the critical angle, it won't actually be to do total internal reflection, instead it will be transmitted um, into the cladding. So what this does is this eliminates paths that have multiple reflections. So only more direct paths are transmitted to the optical fiber and this reduces the pulse broadening.